okay so we will start from here so geography uh, first let me explain the importance of the subject uh, for prelims specific uh, geography is an important subject which comprises of geography itself as well as the agriculture portion and the environment portion also because the topics that you are reading you will be reading in geography will comprise of all the three subjects because environment is not completely different from geography it is also an important part of it so in geography you need to focus upon the static as well as the current affairs and the basic division of geography is physical and human geography so you people must be aware of it right the physical geography comprises of geomorphology climatology oceanography and biogeography and if we further divide those subjects for example i have divided two of the topics like geomorphology you need to be well aware of the earth interiors the types of uh, magma the types of lava is there and uh, the depth of earth interior the type of landforms that are being formed because of endogenetic and exogenetic forces right volcanoes Uh, how the plateaus are formed how the physical features across the earth are formed what is the basic reason behind those things the plate tectonics theory the continental drift theory which defines the formation of today's continent that we see in a globe or a world map right so there is a sequence of formation of these landforms across the world so you need to study those things in the geomorphology the geomorphology term in itself means the study of the formation of earth right any word which has logy in it it means study like biology sociology morpho means the formation and geo means earth so it is the study of the formation of earth second topic is climatology where you'll be reading about the various climatic features across the world across the globe which involves the formation of atmosphere which involves the study of planetary winds the permanent winds the temporary winds local winds right <clears throat> in oceanography you will be reading about the ocean bottom relief the continental shelf the continental rise uh, ocean currents across the globe water masses and similarly in biogeography you will be reading about the flora and fauna across the world similarly the important aspect of geography is human geography so while we start reading geography we start from physical features and we end up studying in human features as well because eventually humans are residing in those physical features the activities of humans are impacting the physical features right so it's also becomes an integral part of geography where you'll be reading about the population the growth of population various theories of population growth the demographic attributes demography includes the uh, males females and every other gender urban morphology right again again the logy word is coming urban morphology means the study of formation of urban settlements or urban areas similarly in the regional planning section you will be reading the regional development the backward area development regional imbalances right regional planning for example if you need to if you, if you become a district magistrate of a region and you need to develop a backward area of that particular region then what are the steps that you will be focusing upon so these kind of overview you will be reading in geography itself right you need to be well aware of the physical features well aware of the uh, social features of those particular area on the basis of which you will start developing the region so this is the basic overview of the subject and geography includes static as well as current affairs and current affairs become very important uh, in the human geography aspect right where you will be reading the a uh, human aspect on the basis of population tribes and every other point that has been discussed uh, other parts are settlement geography and economic geography right and one more part is also there the environment geography is also there that's not written over here but it's also a part of physical geography moving on talking about uh, i'll be i'll be uh, bifurcating the discussion between prelims and mains so starting for prelims there will be around 10 to 15 questions specific to geography in if i include the question from environment as well it will move on till 20 to 25 questions so the weightage will be minimum 15% in your paper right and starting from the basics you need to cover ncrts which are very basic in nature and you need to have thorough knowledge of those ncrts 
avoid class 6 7 8 9 10 uh, focus upon class 11th and 12th so these are the four books that you'll be focusing upon uh, fundamentals of physical geography and india physical environment these two books are very very important to understand the physical aspect of geography across the world as well as our own country because there are multiple features that are present across the world in the form of mountains rivers grasslands oceans plateaus there are many physical features and you need to be thorough with those physical features you need to have mental map in your mind which will imprint those features while solving the questions while answering the questions in the mains as well right so this kind of information you'll be getting from class 11th book uh, which covers physical features of india as well as the world and similarly uh, as we study the world similar features are there in our country as well there are multiple mountains rivers every other kind of physical features is present in india also so you need to be thorough with those features you need to be thorough with the location of those features the properties right so uh, first things first there is a lot to learn in geography there will be a lot of facts that you need to be uh, well aware with a lot of definition you need to by heart memorize and practice so yeah it, it's it's a, a bit longer task so that's why you need to start geography at the first instance uh, class 12th class 12th is covering human geography aspects uh, human geography is relatively easier because uh, it is it is one thing that you you can feel and observe in your everyday life right so it becomes a little bit easier than physical geography physical geography becomes a bit more tougher because it's it's a very different aspect for many of you right because many of us do not come from geography background and the features that you will be reading in those books you you cannot see them right away you need to search over the internet and see those features through uh, photos and through videos so you also need to do that as well the second point is the gc leon book it's also a necessary textbook because it specially covers the physical features for example the landforms that are formed in the uh, because of uh, water movements because of rivers the landforms uh, in the glaciers in uh, desert areas right so there are multiple landforms specific to those areas so this book covers very smartly in very detailed manner and along with a proper and detailed diagram as well so you will uh, start grasping that content quicker right and the second thing is that this book uh, book covers is the climatic features across the country the there are various climate across the country across the globe uh, for example laurentian type of climate china type of climate equatorial climate right and uh, uh, different kind of vegetation is related to those particular climate different types of physical and human aspects are present in those uh, specific type of climates so that particular thing is covered in gc leong in very detailed manner and in a very lucid manner as well so in gc leong you will be getting multiple locations as well so that uh, try to mark those locations in your world map as well right moving on yeah third thing will be map work uh, it uh, i need not to focus upon that it's also a very important aspect of geography that you need to be aware of location and where it is so i'll suggest you all to paste a political and physical map of world and india uh, near your study table or wherever you uh, you are studying regularly on daily basis so that it becomes handy it 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 continuously comes in front of your eye so that you'll be able to recall it correctly at the time of exam right so things start very early for geography you need to start early for geography to grasp things in quick time second secondly atlas so everything cannot be detailed in a map that you'll be pasting around the wall so an atlas also is a very required book so in those atlas you will be getting a detailed overview of a particular area for example if you are studying the northeastern part of area then the northeastern part of india then you will be getting the uh, name of tributaries of brahmaputra you will be getting the name of important mountains that are very local to northeastern countries northeastern states of india and uh, those are not quite visible in your world map or the india map that you'll be pasting around 
right? So that's why Atlas is also an important aspect of our study. Next is notes making, right? If you're not making note, you will not be able to revise the content. So note making eventually becomes very important part of your study pattern. And as you study these NCRTs, try to jot down the important keywords, important definitions and maps that are given in the NCRTs because eventually you will not be able to go back to those basic textbook and revise. You have to have your own notes in your hand for quick revision, right? Memorization of the content. Whatever you are writing, you need to memorize because everything should be there in your mind. Your mind will be with you while writing the exam. Your notes will not be there, right? So everything should get imprinted in your mind and it is only possible if you make notes and if you revise those notes regularly, right? So how to make notes? It's a different aspect. It's a different video that I'll cover in the next section, but primarily may just make sure that you need to make notes out of whatever you are reading with respect to any other subject. Uh, keeping aside geography in any other subject you are reading, for example, sociology or uh, even the technical subject like maths or uh, other uh, science based subjects, you need to make notes out of everything that you are reading. Again, the next point is current affairs. Current affairs is also important for geography because we have the aspect of human geography as well. And human geography mainly, mainly revolves around current affairs, right? So keeping a tab on newspapers and monthly magazine, <clears throat> it also becomes an integral part of our study. Moving on, uh, reasoning and interrelationship is a important uh, aspect of this subject because you need to you need to do multiple reasoning and you need to interrelate multiple topics and multiple topics are this much only you if a question comes on himalayas you should be able to answer on the basis of geomorphological aspect answer on the basis of climatological aspect what what is the basis of human geography in those answers or in those region you need to you should be able to integrate these three four topics and write a good answer so we will be covering few uh, two two question towards the end of this presentation so we'll see it, see it later now the importance of relation uh, reasoning and interrelationship is this map uh, if anyone anyone have heard about ocean currents anyone uh, yes sir heard about it right Anyone have read about ocean currents? What are they? Uh, sir? What, what are the ocean currents? How they are formed? And what uh, is the output of those ocean currents? Right? See, th these, are, these are two world maps. And the first map is showing the ocean currents. The current that, it, that is shown in blue are the cold current. And the current that is shown in red are the warm current. So there are two types of ocean currents. I'm trying to explain the importance of interrelationship, right? So uh, focus upon the first map. There are two kinds of ocean currents, warm ocean current and the colder ocean current. The second map shows the important fishing grounds across the world. So the important fishing grounds are located at the confluence of cold and hot currents. For example, uh, here you can see the South Equatorial Current and the Peru Current, right? Uh, towards the left of the world map, equatorial current and the Peru current. And there is a major fishing ground at the confluence of that current. Similarly, towards the north, the right side of the eastern part of North America, you can see Labrador current confluencing with the North Atlantic drift or the Gulf Stream. And you can see a very big fishing ground over there. Right. So things are very much interrelated in geography. One thing is happening because something has happened earlier. Understood. So that's why we need to study it in an interrelated manner. Because of the confluence of warm and cold current, there is a very important nutritional rich zone that comes up. And to, to get the benefit of those important nutrition, fishes get converged over there and we go there and uh, uh, start fishing. Right. So that's why those particular area becomes a very important fishing grounds. Got my point or any doubt is there. 
anyone start speaking because i cannot see the other screen i am at the presentation got it sir okay okay so i'll i'll move move forward yeah remembering important terms and definitions so while i say this there are many terms that are available in geography which you'll be hearing it for the first time for example caldera what is caldera what is cone what is magma what is lava these are very interrelated words and you need to be well aware of what are they and what is their difference fjords estuaries continental shelf continental rise trenches geos temperature inversion permanent and temporary winds right so i'm trying to explain the depth of the subject and the importance of the kind of preparation that i am focusing upon in the previous slides right so these these kind of important keywords will be there while you will be reading your gc leong or ncrts so try to note these words down in your notes copy and write the definition along with the diagram for example here the diagram shows the cast features cast topographical features cast landform is formed on the limestone based rocks so these rocks are made up of limestone and because of the chemical weathering this landforms are formed at different time period for example there is a word doline there is a word called polje uwala right there is also a cave uh, cavern cavern means cave uh, cast cones so there are multiple keywords that you have not even heard yet and you will be reading them for the first time so those keywords are very important and that's why i'm focusing upon focusing upon notes making and continuous revision stalactite stalagmite these are very important words and questions will eventually come in the exam on the basis of these keywords right so yeah moving on various climatic classifications uh, these classifications are mentioned in your gc leong book the equatorial type of climate mediterranean savanna british type laurentian climatic china type of climate so you need to be focusing upon the temperature variation rainfall variation the changing vegetation in those particular type of climate faunal diversity and most important importantly and basic feature is the distribution of those climatic features on the globe on the world map which particular area has equatorial type which particular area has savanna type what is the variation how is the variation why is the variation right so you need to be focusing upon why portion while preparing because there is a difference between upsc and state services and the major difference is the reasoning of the topic state services usually do not focus upon the reasoning and the question starts from why or what and in upsc the question will start from why why is it happening right next especially for indian geography so previously what whatever we have learned is common for indian as well as uh, world geography but some things are very specific to indian geography and it is indian climate so you need to be study indian climate in detail how does monsoon occurs there are various questions on monsoon why does monsoon occurs why why there is a monsoon break that we experience every year why sometimes there is a, a, a flurry of monsoon and sometimes there is a drought like situation in the country in the same time period of starting from june to ending in august right what are the influencing factors how indian monsoon is interlinked with permanent wind movement of at the atmosphere what is the role of various physical features which transforms indian monsoon there are physical features like tibetan highland maskerine high tropical easterly jet stream right you you must have heard about el nino la nina subtropical easterly jet streams so these these will be very new keywords that you will be encounter while reading ncrts and gc leong try to focus upon the reasoning part second thing is western disturbance it's also an important aspect of indian climatology how western disturbance is formed how it interacts with indian atmosphere and what is the positive and negative impact of western disturbance in indian climate as well as in indian society because anything that's happening in the atmosphere is eventually impacting the agriculture of the country eventually impacting the farmers eventually impacting the nutritional security of of the people of the country right 
it is eventually impacting the export pattern of our country because if the climate is getting worse agricultural produce will get impacted and we will not be able to export the quality of goods or the quantity of goods that we are exporting earlier and it is causing us a current account deficit so that's how geography is interlinked with economy as well next point is agriculture agriculture becomes an important aspect of geography because starting from agri agriculture provides us food and every other thing is related to food itself so agriculture how it how it, it is getting impacted how uh, what are the issues of agriculture what are the problem in marketing of agricultural produce what is the issue of farmers what is the issue of nutritional security in the farmers as well farmers family what is integrated farming what is the positive and negative impact of commercial agriculture in our indian society right so these are interrelated topics and you cannot answer those topics by reading one point only you need to be well aware of multiple aspects so basically you need to be well aware of these aspects strong understanding of geomorphology climatology oceanography as well as the human geography aspect right yeah moving on to uh, the indian drainage system so after understanding indian drainage system you you will be capable to understand why floods occurs most importantly or in perennial basis towards northeastern region of the country why assam is flood prone area why perennial floods occurs in assam in that particular region and what is the reason or why we are not able to contain those kind of floods right uh, after after reading the indian drainage system you can definitely answer the reason behind the floods or the flurry of rains that or the, or the cloud burst that has occurred in the himachal pradesh area of the country very recent understanding the physiographic division of the country it will help you to understand what is watershed how physiographic division has formed and every everything related to why of the physiographic divisions like vindhyachal aravalli sat malas tandakarani region of the country right uh, there are various hills and rain, uh, mountain ranges towards the south as well the eastern ghats the western ghats the anamalai hills the various type of soils and minerals because every other thing is interrelated if you start studying soil you need to have strong understanding of geomorphology for example the black soil of the country is formed because of the reunion hotspot that was there during the movement of gondwana land towards the eurasian plate right so this kind of understanding has to be there mapping for prelims uh, there are usually four to five questions that are coming in the prelims so for mapping specific you need to uh, have a tab on current affairs because usually they ask questions from the current affairs only and there are some famous regions where mapping will eventually come and the important areas are west asia the region of uh, iran saudi arabia turkey and all next is southeast asia which involves myanmar thailand and uh, singapore cambodia right central asia central asia involves turkmenistan afghanistan uh, kazakhstan and uh, you need to have a knowledge of countries locations and capitals so it it's good to remember all the countries across the world all the important countries across the world try to locate their capitals it's a very basic exercise but it is an interesting one and being a student of geography you should be well aware of these th these things understanding the physical feature across the world like important rivers dnieper dniester darling murray river nile river amazon and their important tributaries because they usually ask questions on these uh, important physical features across the world straits of the world dardanelles bosphorus that are present in the turkey region and across the world there are multiple straits karsh strait is there mountains of the world right mountains uh, while while studying uh, geomorphology you will be getting the mountains names across the world for example while studying the continent continent collision continent ocean collision in geomorphology you will be reading rocky mountains you will be reading andes 
you will be reading the for reason of formation reason behind the formation of himalayas and alps drakensberg atlas mountains what is the reason behind multiple volcanoes are present in the italy area right the uh, uh, south european countries and similar pointers you need to be well aware uh, while studying the indian geography region and in indian geography focus upon the review tri river tributaries as well so they are also very important and uh, yeah there are frequent questions that has been observed in previous years so till now we have mostly covered the uh, coverage area for prelims so anyone have any doubt any doubt uh, sir yes sir is it also important to know about the resources that are in the places sir like while covering the what Rivers kind of resources about, what kind of resources uh, you know important uh, maybe is say lithium resource that's found in uh, uh, kashmir or you know uh, mm. whichever is in news or whichever has been come like you know in the previous your questions is it important for us to know uh, what are the um, mineral resources some like that yes that yes yes definitely area? definitely definitely the mineral resource system in the country the the basis of availability of those minerals is depends upon the geomorphology uh, geomorphological features of the those, that place right for example the availability of iron mm -hmm. is very high in karnataka region right and the availability of coal is very high in jharkhand uh, chatisgarh and odisha region right so there is a reason behind it the geomorphology of that particular area is such that these particular minerals are available over there right so yeah eventually while reading ncrts you will be covering these particular aspects and for example new minerals called lithium has been observed in the riyasi district of jammu and kashmir so these kind of aspects you'll be covering with the help of current affairs right everything will you will not find everything in ncrts but you will cover you you'll make a very strong foundation by reading ncrts and on top of that you'll add current affairs as well right, right. okay so so uh regarding resource if we compensate with current affairs stuff that will be enough right sir or we have to uh, go Things, ahead and search for everything every see there, there, there is no specific places. boundary to ge study geography right I, i cannot say that yeah by uh, till uh, that that point you you should study geography and after that point you should stop studying geography but there there are basic things that you should be reading you cannot avoid those things so unavoidable things are ncrt gc leong and current affairs and current affairs has no limit understood right. so the points that has been covered till now yes you will be eventually covering those things while preparing okay so got it thank you yeah. sir okay anyone else uh, yes sir uh, yeah. sir if uh, i am covering geography physical, physical geography from savinder singh so do i need to read gc leong as well you are covering physical geography from saminder singh yes sir as my optional is also geography uh i will i will suggest you to go through gc leong once because saminder singh will not will not give you the overview of the topics that is given in gc leong because gc leong okay. is a textbook of class 10th right so it will give you a very good overview of things and it 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 becomes very important for prelims okay sir Uh, sir, one more thing I want to ask. Yes. Uh, sir, regarding mapping, uh, do we need to uh, take separate maps and uh, marking uh, do marking in that, or we need to mark on atlas itself? Uh, uh, it's, is it's the current good. affairs it's, those are in use? The current affairs those are in use. You need to have a list of markings that are that you are doing in the atlas, right? So that you okay. don't forget towards the end. Mm -hmm. and if you are marking in atlas or if you are marking in a separate map that's your choice but you need to have a list of pointers that you are marking okay sir right. thank you because towards the end towards the end like 7 uh, days or 10 days before the prelims exam you should be reading those pointers and your mind will uh, automatically map those pointers to the world map or the india map yes sir okay yeah thank you sir anyone else no one so we'll move forward and uh, move towards the mains 
so for mains preparation uh, study of geography is obviously important for gs paper 1 and it involves around 100 to 110 marks in paper 1 itself so which counts about to about 40 percent weightage and uh, because you will be reading economic geography disaster management as well as environment uh, environmental features in geography itself you will be covering gs paper 3 as well because these topics are there in gs paper 3 so i'll i'll suggest you all to go through the syllabus of gs 1 2 3 4 once and uh, then try to relate what i'm saying right now in the second point it directly helped towards gs paper 3 because it covers agriculture environment and disaster management how disaster management because reading the core area of geography, you will be understanding where the earthquake occurs, where does the volcano occurs, what is the reason behind it. So it becomes easier to answer the question on disaster management because you know the core reason why the disaster is occurring. Right. Uh, strong reasoning and interrelationship is required, like I have explained earlier with the help of two world maps. If the question comes why this particular fishing ground is available in the Grand Banks. Grand Banks is, a, is an area towards the eastern part of North America. So you should be able to answer with the help of Labrador Current and Gulf Stream and North Atlantic Drift because these two uh, cold and warm current meets at the area where the fishing ground is there. So this kind of interrelationship is required. Make topic wise notes. For example, there is an important topic called continental drift. So your notes should not increase 100, 150 words. It should have diagrams. It should have flowchart and the related keywords as well. The words like jigsaw fit, the words like fossil evidences. There are multiple examples that are given in uh, uh, while reading continental drift theory of Alfred Wagner. So who gave this theory or Alfred Wagner gave the continental drift theory. So you should be very well aware of this name. Memorize them and try to replicate in your answers. Secondly, uh, if you are mentioning challenges in your answers, then you should be providing solution as well. You cannot leave challenges and run away, right? Relate your question to the current affairs also. For example, if a, if a question comes on, uh, there are frequent landslides that are occurring in Himalayan region, then you should be starting from the landslide that has occurred in the Shimla area of Himachal Pradesh very recently, two, three days back. Right. So that's how you need to relate to the current affairs. The additional reading that are suggested is from down to earth Yojana and Kurukshetra. Kurukshetra magazine uh, very specifically covers agriculture portion of the country. So by reading it, you'll be getting a specific solution, a unique solution, which will make your answer different from others. Down to earth will give you important aspects of uh, the climatology and the uh, various various human human geography factors that are happening across the globe so yes these are additional reading that are suggested but apart from the basic reading and basics are must and these are on top of that next next uh, government schemes are also important in geography because while providing solution you should be suggesting the government scheme you should be uh, pinpointing the government scheme that that has been that has been taken the step that has been taken by the government to improve the situation right so uh, towards the end i'll be discussing two questions i'll, I'll not be discuss the, uh, dis, uh, discussing the answer but how to uh, attempt these questions for example himalayas are highly prone to landslides discuss the reasons and suggest suitable measures of mitigation so to answer this particular question the interrelationship that i have i have been talking about the kind of interrelationship you need to have in your mind is the understanding of the geology of Himalayas, the geomorphology of Himalayas. So with the help of these points, you will be able to uh, write the answer like they comprises of sedimentary rocks and sedimentary rocks are very slippery in nature. Why sedimentary rocks? Because Himalayas are very young mountains. The formation has started just 60 million years ago. And because they are very young mountains, very young fold mountains, they are not, uh, uh, they are prone to landslides as well as earthquakes. Right. Second point is population and settlemental characteristics of the region. You'll be talking about the population growth in Himalayan region. You'll be talking about the kind of unplanned set cities that are getting developed. 
you'll be talking you'll be giving the example of joshimand the subsidence land subsidence of joshimand that are, that has occurred the economic activities that is going on in the region the uh, mineral extraction activities that's going on the uh, the four uh, four lane road that is being prepared for badrinath kedarnath area the local climate of the region the anthropogenic activities that uh, that's going on in the region right so i'm trying to give you the various aspect that will comprise a complete answer for this particular question right so that's all this question shows that you will you will be able to write a good answer if you have a complete understanding of the topic and geography comprises of physical as well as human understood so that's all with the help of those two topics studying those two topics in a deep manner in a detailed manner you will be able to write the answer similarly in the second question why are the world's fold mountain system located along the margins of the continent like the south american south america map is there and towards the western part andes are present for example towards the north america on the western part rockies are present right uh, in african region towards the north western portion of africa atlas mountains are present so these are fold mountains and the question is asking why they are present at the margin of the continent the reason behind is the continent continent collision and the ocean continent collision so to answer this question you need to have a good understanding of plate tectonics you need to memorize the name of the plates for example the exam uh, the diagram that's given over here the name of the plate is nazca plate there is one more plate called juan de fuca plate the other plate is south american plate the direction of their movement they are moving towards each other right which is resulting into collision and the formation of fold mountains so that's why that's how you will be answering the questions and to answer them in a holistic manner you need to have complete understanding of the subject so this is the last level of your preparation you need to reach up till here where you will be able to interrelate topics and write good answers and that that's how because if you if you will have good understanding you'll be able to represent them in a crisp manner you will be able to represent them with the help of diagrams flow charts as well and that's how a good answer comes out on the examination day right so yeah the basic challenges that that a student can face while reading geography is the syllabus is large no doubt the syllabus is large but the positive point is it also covers the aspect of paper 3 it it covers the 40% syllabus of paper 1 and it is very important in your prelims preparation as well so the kind of output that a single subject can give is a, is also huge so this large syllabus should not bother you much second point is some aspects of there are the subject is technical in nature so no doubt you need to have a good technical understanding as far as physical geography is concerned and good interrelationship capability while writing the answers the subject is full of technical keywords there are multiple keywords that you will face some of the keywords are mentioned in the slide as well arids arids hanging valley these are the physical feature of uh, i think physical feature of glacial landform seeps seeps is a physical feature of desert landform oxbow lake meanders are the feature of rivers memorization is required the kind of keywords that you can see on the slide these are very new to you so you need to memorize them you need to make notes out of them you need to show them uh, diagrammatically in front of you so that your mind will remember it for a longer period of time and then the last challenge comes which is answer writing so answer writing comprises all the basic or intermediate level understanding of the subject and that's how you will try you will be able to understand the question and answer it appropriately so how to approach the subject strong understanding of the topics is very important start with the basics stick to limited resources and give regular revisions regular guidance is uh, any day very important and very required uh, necessary entity in your preparation which we will provide timely coverage of the syllabus becomes important because the subject is large enough to make you forget right so timely coverage becomes necessary for the subject and regular answer writing towards the end 
once the syllabus is completely covered once you got the basic understanding of the subject once you start feeling that yes now i have the understanding and now i can explain geographical questions in good amount of words you should start writing answers and review them from an expert so this is the sequence step by step process for covering geography and excelling in right so this is the basic discussion on prelims and mains and if anyone have any question any kind of question regarding prelims and mains just start question anyone right so i am i'm done from the presentation side so now it's up to you if you have any kind of question you can ask i'll answer them or else you can start studying the subject and many questions you'll encounter while reading the subject you can come to come back to me then as well uh sir yes sir i have a doubt like as jaise ki geography subject hai Uh -huh. i don't have doubts in prelims but mains i have some doubt like i have covered almost a uh, notes from a uh, institute and also made a well defined notes so further what should i add in it like i am thinking of adding current affairs and if possible then like agriculture portion it is already covers in economy so i am uh -huh. not adding here uh, that will uh -huh. be fine sir yeah if you are covering agriculture and economy section that's also good but try to keep a tab on the current affairs that are happening try to keep a tab on the uh, changing agricultural reforms or the changing uh, cropping pattern of the country right so keep a tab on the current affairs as well so agriculture portion is sorted if you are done with it in the economy economy section and, and the first question the first question was related to prelims or what uh only means not prelims okay and for and means? further sir uh, and sir i have doubt like uh, uh, like nowadays in geography environment type question and disaster type question are asking like yes. uh, subsequently i am covering uh, vision uh, vision is means 365 then other sources do i have to refer or are done with it and it will cover uh, up to no, low no, period no other other sources are not required if you have covered the basics then you should start writing answers and uh, mm -hmm. start reading the model answers as well so you will be enriching your content with the help of model answers only okay so so no further addition required just basics from uh, any source and plus uh, current affairs addition and if possible then agriculture and environment interlink cases that yes if you if your if your static is completely covered then the further addition will come only from the current affairs the changing current affairs right because every now and then government is in government is launching a new scheme related to agriculture so yeah just keep a tab on it and uh, add them to your notes and sir like nowadays the questions are coming on the states and their significance for the mm -hmm. melting of the glacier that mm -hmm. that can be covered with the environment knowledge by including in geography right sir yes yes and uh, you need to be thorough with the newspaper reading also because okay sir the frequently frequently changing topic will be covered in newspaper or else towards the end of the month a magazine will also cover them yes sir thank you sir right uh, hello sir yes हेलो आई एम ऑडिबल यस यस यू आर ऑडिबल प्लीज सर मैंने ये पूछना था कि सर जो आपने ये सेशन लिया है मतलब जैसे हमें समाधान 2024 के लिए जैसे मेंटर्स हमें टारगेट्स देते हैं तो वो कंप्लीट करके उनको सबमिट करना होता है तो जो ज्योग्राफी का आज आपने सेशन लिया है तो सर इसमें हमें खुद से ये सब्जेक्ट uh, तैयार करना पड़ेगा या या फिर मेंटर्स हमें uh, ये टारगेट्स uh, दिए जाएंगे मेंटर्स के द्वारा नहीं मेंट मेंटर से गाइडेंस ऑब्वियसली मिलेगा ये जो okay. सेशन लिया गया है इट इज जस्ट टू एक्सप्लेन यू द बेसिक स्ट्रेटजी दैट इज नीड टू बी फॉलोड टू कवर द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ ज्योग्राफी राइट ओके 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 थैंक यू सर यू विल बी गेटिंग या यू विल बी गेटिंग द गाइडेंस फ्रॉम मेंटर्स ओनली ओके सर थैंक यू ओके एनीवन एल्स हेलो सर हेलो आई एम कुलदीप हियर सर करेंटली आई हैड प्लान दैट आई शुड स्टार्ट विद द मेन स्पेसिफिक टॉपिक्स Uh, it's mm -hmm. not regarding geography 
main mm-hmm. specific topics just like ethics, internal security, uh, mm-hmm. and all society the part. But the according mm-hmm. to timetable, our the program timetable, the mm-hmm. portion is start paper start from GS one subjects. So mm-hmm. should I uh, change the, my planning or uh, I stick to the, the portion I have decided first? No, stick to your own personal plan, right? Okay. Because the plan that we'll prepare keep will will keep the uh, schedule of many students in mind, and we'll make a rough planning. So okay. it's it's good to stick to your own plan, but just stick to it and follow it regularly. Okay. Sir. Yeah, if, if no more doubt is there, then uh, I'll be concluding the session for today. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank okay, you, sir. So, yeah. Thank you. I will be concluding it. Thank you. Thanks for your attendance. Thank you.